Hi there, and welcome to a uh, introduction video for the candlestick pattern indicator tool from our premium suite. And in this video, we'll uh, talk a little bit about the uh, most important settings that you can uh, use to modify the various patterns. Brief introduction, all bars, of course, have a open, high, low, and close. All of them tell a story about the relationship between buyers and sellers but every candle is unique. There is never a bar or a candle with a identical timestamp and price action. And that is important to keep in mind when looking at the different uh, types of candlestick patterns. So the patterns are also time-based, showing that uh, very little price action occurred on one candle followed by a lot of activity in the next. So tight versus a wide range comparison. And so that is why you predominantly use this type of analysis on minute and daily bars using a calculate on bar close approach. As you see here, there's quite a bit of patterns. Uh, this is of course uh, not even close to all of the candlestick patterns that uh, are mentioned in various books and literature. But basically you have two categories, reversal and continuation patterns. And they can form on one candle or in a combination of two, three or more bars. Uh, you can also use patterns in combination with one another. And uh, what we'll uh, do now is um, just uh, go into a chart here and start to look at the indicator settings. Each pattern is uh, encircled by a color. So this is uh, the falling three methods. The name of the last pattern displayed is always showed here in the data box. A bullish piercing, dark cloud cover. I've only added a few patterns on here and uh, I'd recommend you to do the same, not have all of them because when you're doing analysis on this, uh, it will be difficult to keep track of what you're looking at. So uh, first we'll uh, talk a little bit about this uh, statistical analysis uh, data box, uh, what these numbers mean. Here we see there are 15 falling three methods patterns on this chart. Here we have 15 minute bars on a NASDAQ futures chart with a 150 day look back period. So you see the frequency of this pattern is um, fairly low, 0.2% based on the total amount of uh, bars on the chart. And um, on average here, based on the 15 patterns, the three bar move produced a return of 58.8 uh, ticks. For bearish patterns, you want these numbers to be negative, seeing that they're referring to short positions. After a five bar move, we had negative 13.9 uh, ticks. And then after 10 bars on average, the position had moved 36.1 ticks against the short position. So let's go to the beginning of the chart and uh, have a look at how these numbers are calculated. Uh, here we have the rising three method pattern that is the bullish uh, counterpart to the falling three methods. Maybe just a brief introduction to the pattern itself. You see the first bar is a up close large body bar and the second, third and fourth bar they have small bodies or are down closes. They will also be within the range of the first candle. And um, then the fifth and final bar is a up close, also a large body bar and uh, closing above the close of the first bar. So that is the pattern requirement. And um, what we see here is uh, the first pattern after three bars, you have a return of 24 ticks. After five bars, you have 44 ticks in favor of the position. And after 
10 bars, 203 ticks. So how do we arrive at these numbers? Well, you look at the open of the first bar following the detection of the pattern, and then you count to three, one, two, three, and then you look at the open of this candle and the comparison is then made between here and here, and you get 24 ticks out of that. And then going to the fifth bar, uh, you will have 44 ticks and all the way up to the 10th bar. So that is uh, how the statistical probability or the expected return on the pattern is calculated. Uh, however, you can't really rely on these um, figures uh, before you have reached the statistical minimum sample size uh, depend on the confidence interval. It's a complicated uh, mathematical procedure. It's, uh, the minimum should be between 100 and 200. So now that we've uh, explained that, then uh, we'll go into a second chart here and uh, have a look at the different indicator settings. So uh, first, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, increase the look back period from 150 to 1500 days here. And now we see this box has taken on a color, the same color as the plot for the pattern itself. We have uh, 120 patterns here. And in the indicator dialog box, you can uh, set the minimum sample size here. And you can also uh, change the evaluation period. By default, it's uh, 3, 5, 10. If you like, you can uh, put in 1, 3, and 5, or some other numbers here to evaluate the probability of the pattern. The falling three method requirement is uh, the uh, inverse uh, of the rising three method. So you have a down close bar during a downtrend here, a large body, and then uh, three small body bars or up closes within the range of this uh, first candle. We're talking about the body uh, needs to be within the range of the first candle. And then a confirmation of the trend. Again, a large body bar down close below the close of the first bar. In the indicator dialog box, we have here a reference period that is used for calculating the average range and average body size in the look back period here, 72 bars. And then for some patterns, you have a doji requirement for the falling three methods and the rising three methods. We're looking at the small body and the large body candles. So you could uh, change this to say, okay, I'm allowing a little bit uh, bigger size for the small body bars and a smaller size for the large body requirement. And by changing these, you will see the statistical expectancy of the pattern change here. I suggest that you only change one of these settings at the time. So if you change a bunch of them, it will be difficult to see what made the impact. Reference period, you can change as well. And you always then see immediately the effect of your changes displayed in the data box. Uh, there is also a uh, trend definition here uh, based on a average true range calculation. By default, you also have the option to calculate uh, the trend by a average range. So the reference period here is based on that for the ATR and the average range. And then you have percentage points and ticks as well as a threshold. And once that is met by factor of the deviation multiplier, the trend will change. Likewise, in the pattern, you see that here it is defined to locate the pattern in a downtrend. So again, pointing to a continuation pattern. And for the rising three methods, we're looking at patterns in uptrends.
So that will uh, conclude the uh, quick uh, introduction uh, for the candlestick pattern indicator. If you have any uh, questions, feel free to reach out to me via the contact form over at Lizard Indicators. Otherwise, uh, drop me a line at info at lizardindicators.com. Always happy to hear from you. Until then, take care and bye-bye.